Shabbat Shalom. I, I hope you will uh, indulge me in a somewhat uh, a shorter sermon than normal because we have a musical guest at the end of our service. It's not Taylor Swift. This is just to set, level set expectations right now. <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom. A hundred days is what it's been since October 7th. A hundred days of fear, of concern, of worry over our brothers and sisters who are being held captive, who are fighting to free those who are being held captive, of what's happening in Israel. A hundred days of concern over what's happening in our country here and where anti-Semitism lives and what it's doing. And of course, it's been more than a hundred days of that, right? We've been worried about what's happening in Israel since it started. We've been worried about anti-Semitism in this country, though maybe not quite as acutely, forever. And we add to those worries a lot of other things that are happening in the world. There's weather patterns that essentially meteorologists are saying, I don't know, but get ready. There's storms, there's blizzards, there's rain, there's 60 degree days in January. We don't know what's happening, but it makes us feel nervous. Well, even if we don't know that it's doing it, the weirdness of the weather adds to our anxiety. What's happening in this country politically adds to our anxiety. What's happening in our world, in our own world, in the large world, adds to our anxiety. Add on top of that algorithms that put information in front of us not based on what is the most useful information that we have or what do we need to know or what does an informed citizenry need, but what is going to make us the angriest because that's what we're going to click on and look at and retweet or share or re-X or whatever it is that we do. It adds and it builds the anxiety that we're feeling. And in some ways, we've never felt like this before. Our generation hasn't really had to do the things that we are being asked to do, to uh, bring in the information that we're being asked to bring in. It hasn't come at us with this speed or ferocity ever before. And at the same time, we've been here before. We're celebrating this weekend Martin Luther King. Someone who we celebrate for many wonderful contributions, chiefly to help lead us through a time of darkness in our country before. We've known this kind of anxiety. We know what it can do to us. We know what it can do to our people. And we see it in the Parsha that we read today. Moses and Aaron are trying to bring the people along in this project of getting out of Egypt. They've done one round of talking to Pharaoh, and it didn't go well. And they come back to the people and they try to say, okay guys, you know, this one didn't work, but we're going to do it. We can do it. And the Torah tells us that the people of Israel were not able to hear what Moses and Aaron were saying. Mikotzer ruach. Because they were shrunken or short of spirit and soul. Mikotzer ruach, they were shriveled of their spiritual capacity because of the hard burdens that Pharaoh had put on them. And our classic commentaries wonder, what is this kotzer ruach? What is this smallness of spirit? What could it possibly be? So Rashi gives us two answers. One of our traditional commentaries, he, one physical and the other spiritual. Interestingly, already by the 10th century, he's linked to this connection between physicality and spirituality. And he says that on the one hand, kotzer ruach means that literally the Israelites couldn't take a full breath. They were so beset by their fear and by the labor that they had to do that they couldn't completely fill their lungs. What we would say today, they couldn't get to the bottom of their breath 
They were so stressed. And that's what it means when it says kotzer ruach. He also says that their spiritual view was what was shortened. And they couldn't see God working in the background of what was happening. And because they couldn't see God, they couldn't believe that God could be present in their suffering, they couldn't listen to Moses, this guy who claims to be sent by God, because they didn't truly believe that that was true. So Rashi sees this spiritual smallness as being both physical and also spiritual, unable to see God. A later commentary, Ramban says, no, Rashi, that's not right. They had no trouble believing in God. They believed in God, but it was painful to think about God. What does he mean? When he says it was painful to think about God, he says their souls were so damaged by the harsh treatment that they had. At that point, thinking about the idea of salvation was painful. That's a fascinating way of looking at human psychology. They were so oppressed, they were so uh, overburdened that thinking about salvation, thinking that there might be something better was a hope too painful to bear. And so when Moses and Aaron came to them, they couldn't hear them. Lo yecholim lishmo, it says. They couldn't, were not able to hear them because it hurt so much to believe that there might be something better out there. And Rashbam says that the kotzer ruach is a shortness of resilience. Basically, the people were, had it in them to believe in hope for a minute. And at the first sign of trouble from Pharaoh, they lost it. And they just couldn't do it anymore. And finally, a later commentary, Sforno, says that the kotzer ruach, the smallness of spirit, meant that they couldn't believe in the audacity of God's plan and Moshe's plan. Moses comes to a generation of slaves and says, we're going to get out of here, guys, and we're going to go to a land full of milk and honey. And they, it was like aliens showed up and said, we're going to skip to the moon. They couldn't believe that it could happen. And Sforno draws a parallel here between the Israelites and Avraham. Right? Avraham, who's a great spiritual genius, Avraham hears, I'm going to take you to this land and it's going to be amazing and I'm going to make you a great nation and all of this stuff. And he says, yeah, that can totally happen. Show me where to go. And in the moment, says Sforno, when the Israelites couldn't even understand what it would mean to go free, the Kotzer, they had such a narrow-minded spirit in this moment that God decides this generation is not going to be able to go into the land. Which is interesting, because other rabbis put that moment much later in this story. But Sforno says it happens right here. And God says basically, okay, I'm going to get this generation out of Egypt, but only their children, who will have a more broadness of spirit, will be able to actually build something in the land. And as we look around the world today, I feel in myself a kotzer ruach. As I work, as I doom scroll, uh, if you don't know what doom scrolling is, ask someone younger than you next to you what that means, but you can get it from context clues. As I lose sleep over what's happening, I can feel my rock shrinking, my ability to focus on the broader picture, my ability to believe in audacious goals and solutions to what's happening, my ability to even want to think about the fact that we could be better, that salvation could come, because it can hurt to hope. Now, I don't know if everyone else here feels that as well, but I'm the one talking, so. I think that this kotzer ruach is something that we all have to watch out for. A smallness of spirit can come for any of us at any time, and it can mean that we're not able to hear the person next to us, because we think we know what they're going to say, or we think we don't like what they're going to say, or it's going to hurt what they're going to say, or we just don't believe in them. And it can make it hard for us to hear what God wants us to do. In whatever way we take in what God wants us to do, whether it's through reading text, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through belief, a feeling of narrowness, a feeling of smallness, a feeling of fear and anxiety can block our ability to take that in. 
And a narrow spirit can hurt us physically. It keeps us up. It makes us stressed. It, it constricts the blood vessels and all the things that the doctors here know happen when stress it gets into our bodies. And it's hard to get out. And it, it's hard to think about building something better when we have this kotzer ruach, this narrowness of spirit. So if we don't have it yet, we can try to stop. We can try to have an expansive mind. We can try to have Margot's growth mindset. We can try to be curious about the world around us. But what happens when it's already here? What happens when you've already got a narrowness of soul and spirit brought on by the horrible things that are happening in the world, brought on by the way in which we consume data and information? What do we do in this moment? Well, the rabbis offered two answers to this narrowness of spirit. One that comes from the Parsha and one from Maimonides later on. So the Parsha, what's God's answer to the Kotzer Ruach? The people don't hear what Moses and Aaron are saying. They're not able to follow. And so what does God do? God sends the plagues. Not to the people of Israel. It's not a punishment on them. But how do the plagues break people out of this Kotzer Ruach? They're known as this, they're, they're miracles, they're wonders, they're moftim. God's never done it since. God hadn't really done it before. So what's God doing? God's trying to open up their spirits by showing them awe, by showing them natural wonder. It's going to rain frogs. There's going to be blood. We're going to defeat our enemies in this spectacular and magnificent way. Hopefully, then you'll believe in me. Hopefully, that will open the people up so that they can see God around them, that they can see God's plan, that they can believe if God can bring darkness onto the people, surely God can take us over, you know, across the desert to that land over there. And that's a beautiful way to look at it. And it might worked for the Israelites to an extent, although we see time and time again, their spirits didn't really open up all that much. And pretty soon, they found the narrowness again and they disbelieved in God. And then the cycle of disbelief and punishment and coming back begins for the people when they enter into the desert. The other idea comes from Maimonides. And Rambam says that the way that we deal with this is one specific mitzvah. One thing that God gave us for eternity that can help keep us from having a kotzer ruach, and it is Shabbat. Maimonides says Shabbat is the antidote to kotzer ruach. How? Two ways. The spiritual and the physical. Just like Rashi. Shabbat comes spiritually to remind us that God is there. What do we celebrate on Shabbat? The creation of the world. Great. Bonus points awarded all around. The creation of the world. Who created the world? Always the right answer when a rabbi asks a question. God! That's right! <laughs> so just by observing Shabbat, by saying Shabbat Shalom to someone, you're acknowledging God's existence in the world. God created this world. God is behind all of this. You are bringing God into the space through the even most minor observance of this holy day of Shabbat. So Shabbat has in it an implicit belief. And, says Maimonides, quoting this very verse in the Torah that we read about the Kotzer Ruach because of the hard labor, Shabbat's a day of... You guys are doing great. Yes! Shabbat is a day of rest. Shabbat is a day where we cease our labor. Where all of those things that are oppressing us, that are keeping our spirit and our mind small because we're just trying to put one foot in front of the other and get to the next day, those things go away on Shabbat if we give ourselves a break. So Maimonides says, we've built into our system this inoculation against a small spirit. Shabbat. A little bit of belief, a little bit of rest. It gives us this chance to broaden our minds. So I'm going to ask us all, as we think about the harshness of the world, and there's a lot that's great in the world as well, but there's a lot that's not. And we see what's not more and more and more. And when that starts to wear on us, and we feel our spirit shrinking, and we feel our mindset shrinking, and we feel our ability to hope shrinking, take a Shabbat. Whether it's this Shabbat, next Shabbat, any Shabbat. Take a deep breath. 
Breathe all the way to the bottom of our lungs. Expand ourselves. Think of others. Think of the future. Think of the audacious goals that we have. Think of the divine plan that began when the world was created and survives all around us today. Today, we take that deep breath so that tomorrow we can act to bring salvation to the world around us. Shabbat Shalom.